Hello lovely Gemini, welcome to your February 2024 tarot reading. I know, I can't believe it's February 2024. This is for you if you're Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, cross-watching for a Gemini, just stopping by because you are a Gemini and that's what Geminis do. Um, you have been my second highest viewing star sign, so thank you very much for that Gemini. Okay, we're going to look at love life, we're going to look at channeled messages, we're going to look at where you're at at the moment, what your, oof, what your obstacles are, which I can see what they are from there already, and we'll riff it, because you're Geminis, you're mutable, you're like me, I'm Pisces, we're both mutable, and we like to fly by the seat of our pants a little bit. Let me know as well in the comments section anything about being a Gemini. The thing that I found the most interesting is that Geminis can be in two places at once and I don't just mean metaphorically. Tell me more in the comments because you know best. First overall energy card I've got is the Ten of Wands. So you're coming to the end of a cycle of something. There's something that you... I tend to find with the Ten of Wands that there's something you need to drop or there's something that you need to let go of, certainly, but at the same time, looking for my hand cream, you're kind of invested in it somehow. Because if you think about it, the Ten of Wands is about a sort of unbearably heavy load. But it would be a pretty easy thing if you didn't pick up that load in the first place. You'd just be like, no thanks. Or even if you didn't care about it, you'd be like, well, I'm just going to stick that over there, thanks. This is something you're invested in. Something you want to keep hold of. You want to make it into something. Or it needs to be worth all the work that you've put into it, okay? It's a 10, so you could be at the end of this. I think you're possibly at the end of a cycle, like with the world card, which we don't have yet, but who knows? It feels like the world card. It feels like the end. It feels like the end of a cycle. Interestingly, you've also got the fool. Major arcana, the zero card of the arcana, the beginning, the start, the fool. Do -do -do -do. Let's go. Frank the tank streaking across the quad. That whole woohoo teenage feeling. I am immortal. There is nothing that I can't do. I know. I love that feeling. And Geminis are kind of teenagers of the Zodiac. So never stop being fresh, Gemini. I don't know if you even can. Okay, let's have a look into it. Let's have a look at the cards as well. Let's hope that the table hasn't moved, which it has. Sometimes, if you're lucky or unlucky, depending on which way you look at it, you get to see a pair of pants on the floor or some sellotape or some wires or something like that. I'm here in the corner. Hello! Down here! Let me out! Right, okay, that's enough playing around with the OBS. Okay, oof. Five of swords. Mm -mm -mm. I get that. So this is like your overall month here. I want that one. Oh, that's very nice. Nine of Cups along with the Five of Swords. Hmm. Five of Swords, Venus in Aquarius, hedging your bets or being in a situation which is a bit of a passive aggressive struggle. It's a bit of a game and you might not yet know the rules. It can be in a relationship where something or somebody is hard to reach. That could be you. Geminis can be very hard to reach. In my experience, the best way to get to know a Gemini is as a friend. And I don't know how that goes into romantic relationships. Um, I've never dated a Gemini, I have to say. Not through, you know, not wanting to, but just never happened for me. Never, never dated one of you guys. Um, but I know that you're interesting and I know that you're interested in things. But also, you do like your freedom. So this could be you as well, being stuck in some kind of situation where you feel you've got to manoeuvre your way rather gracefully out. It's not about you going, you know, <laughs> I always think of 
Cartman, you know, screaming gears and going home. Not a very good Cartman impression, but you know what I mean? That kind of feeling of that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to be that bad tempered sort of person. You want to be able to slip out of this with grace to transform a situation. It could be for some of you as well. You're on the receiving end of someone who seems a bit frosty in some way. This can be a love interest that seems distant. It can be a dream of yours that seems distant because look, we've got it with the nine of cups. Nine of cups is the, you know, rubbing the lamp, the genie card, the genie in a bottle. Is it genie in a bottle? Wishes, wishes in the lamp. Oh my God. You know what I mean? Rub the lamp, you get three wishes, etc. Jupiter in Pisces. I don't seem to be able to speak properly today. Jupiter in Pisces, your emotional wish card, what you really, really want, not what you think you want, not what they say you want, but what you really, really want. It would be a good thing in the first week or so of the month to just spend a bit of time. Look at my hot water bottle, by the way. <laughs> it's a sloth. Spend a bit of time daydreaming, dozing, and just thinking, even if it's completely impractical, of what you want, of something you desire, not of what you can get or what you can settle for. Because this card also signals that the universe is listening and that there is an opportunity to have what you want at last, okay? It may be that what you had, you thought you wanted, but it's become too tight. You know, a bit like, it's what I call itchy jumper syndrome. Granny knitted it for you. It was a very kind thing for her to do. Jumper looks great. The color's wonderful, but every time you wear it, you want to tear it off with your teeth. You know what I'm saying. Queen of Pentacles shows up with the Hermit. Oh, these are so not particularly Gemini cards. Patience is normally a thing for Geminis. It's not though that Geminis can't be patient. I had a roommate at university who was a Gemini and it looked like she was impatient, but she was in it for the long game. Never underestimate a Gemini. Queen of Pentacles is telling you, you can have something, someone, whatever, but you need to be patient. Okay, it will be a marathon and not a sprint. It won't be short term. It will be something that's the long haul. Okay, let's see if we can get some glitter on that hermit card. God, the only problem with these cards, you can't see the glitter unless you're in direct sunlight and then you can't see them at all. Then you get the hermit. I don't think this is you. I think this is something or someone else. It's Virgo energy with the hermit but also the energy of introspection. It's the energy of the guru, of knowledge. For some of you, there may be a, a relationship that hasn't quite kicked off properly for some reason, or is in the very early stages. Somebody who's a bit of a mystery to you. You may meet this person in February if you haven't already. Someone who is a bit of a lone wolf quite educated, quite unusual, quite eccentric, quite exciting for you because a bit of a puzzle. I like that. Those of you that are already in a relationship that may be a bit bored, this is some, it's like what they used to call a blow in. You know, in a village when everybody knows everyone, but then someone, there are the blow ins, they come in and they're from, you don't know where they're from, you know, they're new new in town, like a Hallmark movie. You're on the edge of the street that has the pet shop, the bookshop, the ice cream shop and the bakery. You know what I'm saying? You come up to that corner with your latte, you've got a lovely coat on, or your scarf, good scarf wearing on Hallmark. Your scarf is like on point. You're there with your latte, poof! You bump into that person as you both come to the corner of the road. In seriousness, this is could be a new love and it's a bit of an eccentric, interesting person. Perfect, perfect for you, okay? And we'll look at love life in a sec. If this resonates with you, Gemini, there's always an extended reading for you and it will be the first link in the description box. So in the extended, this is a reading in itself, but if you wanna go further, you wanna channel with me, you wanna use the weird decks and we ask 
some of the weird questions we have a good dig how do they feel about you what's the shadow side all that kind of stuff we look for a way through a situation so if you get to the end and it really resonates that's where it is i'm gonna look at work then at love Whoa, that death card's been around quite a lot lately big change again some of you may be I don't think it's like a massive emotional, I can't take it anymore. You know, I don't think it's a huge breaking point. I think it's a gentle assertion that there's more to life than what you're doing. You know, that funny feeling you get of the itchy jumper or the itchy socks where you just think there's more out there for me. I've been happy with this for a while. It served its purpose. Maybe I needed to like pay the rent, buy a house, do something with the money from this job, stay afloat, pay the bills. But I can see something more. I can see something beyond. I can see something where I would be more inspired, where there's more opportunity for Gemini-ness, for randomness, for communication, for the ability to take a message and make it into lots of different avenues. Oh, look at you. Hierophant with the death card. Very good time for you to get some training in whatever it is that you're interested in. It's a good time for you to start a course, go back to school, go to university, go to a night class, learn to do something that inspires you. It's not so much doing a course at work because you have to or doing a course because you think it's going to look good on your CV. This is doing a course like you just want to. Like I did my degree when I chose my degree and I'm a Pisces which is where I met my roommate the Gemini actually. I think uh, Gemini and Pisces have a lot in common in that. When I did my degree I chose exactly what I was interested in. Philosophy, classics, and theology. I mean, I knew that wasn't directly going to lead to a job. It did not matter. I have used it a lot ever since, more than anything else. But I was inspired and I was interesting. It was a freaking fabulous three years. Now, this could be an online course. You know, things have changed since 1066 when I went to university. So this could be, you know, that you go on Teachable or Skillshare or all of those places. Or YouTube, actually, you get loads of things for free. Somebody's teaching something and you need to hear it. And woof, woof, we got a channel, big woof on the woof channel. You may end up teaching it. Ha! Now that, my lovely Geminis, is perfect. Gemini represents the lungs. I don't know scientifically how the lungs work, but this gaseous exchange. I only remember that because at school I remember hearing the words gaseous exchange and I write poetry. So for me it was like, ooh, gaseous exchange. As a Gemini, you should be taking in, like when you're taking in oxygen or whatever you take in, and you should be pushing it back out again. Carbon dioxide maybe, don't know. Pushing it back out again. So in other words, you take in the knowledge you write it, you listen, it's all about mercury. And then you re-deliver it. You're supposed to disseminate knowledge to other people in the zodiac. And in doing this, you can monetize it because people really want to hear what you have to say. So if there's a subject you already know about, bone up on doing a course. If there's a subject you don't know about but you always wanted to, go and learn and you'll be surprised how quickly you become an expert in that area. Please do not forget to do this. Death card and the Hierophant together is a big message. It's what we call in the daily readings, spiritual big jobs. I know. Hit the like button or even subscribe if you're in for that, if you're here for that, if this makes sense to you. Okay. I'm taking two more cards, which is about destiny, and then I'm looking at love, life. Chicka, chicka, chicka. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Right. Under the Five of Swords, we've got the Knight of Swords. 
So whereas in this card, you're not really quite saying how you feel or somebody else isn't or something else isn't, you're not in the right job, maybe it's not at the right stage of a relationship, maybe it's not what you want to hear, this is a bit different. Knight of Swords represents Gemini for a start, but it's also a message. You can see how swiftly he's going. He's like, Doo -doo -doo, got a message to deliver, it's got a wax seal, you know, and they kind of jump on to the battle site. Sire, I have a message, Kadoing, like that. Okay, so this is somebody with a message. Somebody who wants to say something. So it can be something about this learning thing. It can be something about knowledge. It can be the details of a course, even some money coming through for the course. It can be someone in a relationship who finally has something to say that didn't have something to say before. Now, particularly think this as well, because we've then got, it's gorgeous. Let's get a look at the glitter. Swing. No, you can't really see it. Oh yeah. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups. Gemini. Chica -chica. Ace of Cups is lush. Primarily a love card, the beginning of something. It can be the beginning of something you love, so it could relate to the work, but it's got the Nine of Cups above it. Time for you to actually wish for what you want. Make that wish to the universe because that's your emotional wish card. That is your emotional wish, which has a bit of power behind it. I like that a lot. Let's look at your love life. It's giving me an itchy nose. That's always a good sign. Love life, please, for Gem. Ooh, who's that? For your love life, I get the King of Cups. This is a person, again, it could link back to the hermit. This is a person who is a bit eccentric. Somebody who could be into poetry or music or drama or be very intellectual or unusual. Could be a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, not getting a massively strong feeling on that, but getting a strong feeling of the esoteric, of something unknown. You could meet this person at a class for something that's a bit unusual. I'm seeing libraries, I'm seeing books, historical buildings, churches, all that kind of stuff. Very, very strange. If it's someone you're already involved with, it's someone who just you find really quirky and really interesting. Fire sign, Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. I am feeling that a bit for you. And this is taking something to another level. Three of Wands is a card where you've already had the Ace of Wands, you've already had the Two of Wands, and it's a little bit of elevation, passion. Yes, we can take this forward. I feel like some of you are in a situationship or you know someone, there's some kind of seeds of something going on, or there will be in the next few days, there's just this feeling of, potential for me in your love life and it's something that wants to blossom but there was something holding it back so let's have a looky see it feels weird this card oh stuff it we'll take it oh my god gemini so itchy is going to be a really itchy nose which is always good Maybe not, no, blah, blah, not so much for you, but yes, for me. Right. Winner, winner, chicken for our glittery dinner or vegan alternative. Okay. Six of Wands is a peach of a card and don't let anybody tell you any different. It's triumphant. You could really, really win at this, Gemini. You could really, really be the one. And what does it come in with? What are we striding along? Like this guy could even be part of this parade. Look at that. It's like, yes, I invited my friend, the Knight of Cups. He grants love wishes and I am the Six of Wands and I show success. Okay, Knight of Cups is an elevation from the Page of Cups. 
Page of Cups, think of Page of Cups as sending you a text going, or are you up? You know? Or I miss you with just the letter U. It's very, very beginnings of things with, with the page. Stumbling around with a smelly fish in a cup, you know? Knight of Cups, look at that tartan rug. Look at those wings on his heels. What's he got on the horse as well? The horse has got like poinsettias in its mane. This is someone who's put together, completely put together. We've got a green cloak. What's on the cloak? Can't work out what they are. Anywho, good helmet, as the actress said to the bishop and wings on it. This is someone coming towards you with a suggestion, with a love thing, with an elevation. You know, where you're, something gets elevated. This is really cool. Your love life is looking like it's gonna transmute into something else. So this could be something developing. If it comes out of nothing, it's meeting somebody Either way, actually, it's meeting somebody who is eccentric, unusual, quite wonderful and is intrigued by you and your ideas and your conversation. In the extended reading, I'm going to use some different cards. I'm going to do a reading for your person, your relationship. How do they feel about you? OK, let's have some love oracle cards. This is very interesting, especially that one. Okay. First card we get for you, let me just go back to face. First card we get for you is gifts. This is nice and that is what you get with your Knight of Cups. It's like incoming. Love's greatest gift is the ability to truly understand one another. This is someone who gets your weird side. And I'm thrilled because, and I'm coming to this, Geminis can't settle. Settling. <laughs> Avoid settling for less than you deserve in love. Geminis can't settle. I never met a Gemini that would settle. And this is a good thing. You might do it for a while, you might have been doing it for a while, but generally Geminis don't settle. And then clarity. Love can be complicated. Seek clarity in relationships. I don't think you need to seek it. I think it's already coming in. OK, I see this around the second week in February. <sighs> Exciting times, Gemini. This is a very kind of fizzy reading. It's got a lot of fizz about it. I love this. I'm going to go do the extended. If you want to join me, get yourself another cup of tea. I've got my velvet trousers on, very, very comfy, and I'll see you over there in a minute. Leave me a comment and I'll see you soon. See you on the other side. Namaste.